you wanted the best, you've got the best podcast. The hottest, hottest. podcast in the world. In the world. The Chris Voss Show, the preeminent podcast with guests so smart you may experience serious brain bleed. The CEOs, authors, thought leaders, visionaries, and motivators. Get ready, get ready. Strap yourself in. Keep your hands, arms, and legs inside the vehicle at all times. Because you're about to go on a monster education roller coaster with your brain. Now, here's your host, Chris Voss. Hi, folks. It's Foss here from the com. The com. Welcome to the big show, my family and friends. We really appreciate you guys coming by. I don't know uh, where I put the uh, sound bite for the clapping, but thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Everyone sit down. Shut up. Uh, thanks for coming by the show, folks. We've got some uh, amazing, uh, brilliant minds on the show, and none of them are me. That's why we have guests on the show after 14 years. <laughs> I ran on IQ points, I don't know, like about five or ten years ago. Uh, by the way, we're pumping out two to three podcasts a day. Simon Schuster and Penguin Random House are killing my schedule because they decided they wanted to auto-book all their brilliant authors on the show. And I went, oh, sure, that seemed like a good idea at the time. And now I'm contractually obligated to it. There's no contract. Um, but uh, uh, there's a lot of shows. And if you're not listening to them, I want you to lose sleep at night in guilt over the fact that you have not listened to all the shows. I'm just kidding. You can do whatever the hell you want. It's it's. Uh, but if you're not listening to the shows, you're losing out. You're just losing out in your life. You're going to get to the end of your life and be like, you know, one of the things I regret is not listening to more shows than the Chris Voss show. <laughs> and in the meantime, too, refer the show to your family, friends, and relatives. It's the stuff I make up at the beginning of the show and the ramble. Uh, refer the show to your family, friends, and relatives because that's the other regret you'll have when you're on your deathbed. Don't don't go to your deathbed. Just avoid the place. Uh, but uh, send them to YouTube.com, Fortress Chris Voss, Goodreads.com, Fortress Chris Voss, LinkedIn.com, Fortress Chris Voss, the big LinkedIn newsletter. That thing is huge over there. It grows like a uh, it grows like a, a weed, only it's smarter than a weed. I don't know. What's smarter than a weed? I don't know. It's not a politician. Uh, anyway, check that out in TikTok. We're trying to be cool over there as well. He is an amazing gentleman. He has come by the show with us today to talk about everything he does and how he does it. Ken Paskins is on the show with us today. He is the founder of GCE, Strategic consulting and the shift spot he's an accomplished ceo and coo of uh, an executive coach as well uh, he brings a broad range of leadership experience including operations sales acquisitions strategic planning and p and l i believe that stands for profit and loss management uh, up to five i I see. I I may have flunked second grade, uh, but uh, I do know what a PNL is. I've seen it, and it has seen me. Uh, well, leading teams north of four hundred people across North America and Europe for Fortune one hundred companies, such as Oracle. He was raised in Noblesville, Indiana. We won't hold it against him. And it, I I'm sure Noblesville, Indiana, is a wonderful place. I'm just kidding around, people. Don't write me. And he's a graduate of Purdue University. Uh, Ken grew up in a hope and pray entrepreneurial family, meaning that his family lived in uh, either a boom or a bust state, depending yep. upon which idea made it and which one ended up with the lights being turned off. We'll have to find out more about what that's about. <laughs> he watched his father and grandfather uh, try to make business work while trying to learn on the job and not having experience needing to truly know how to run a successful business. This is interesting. Sounds like my father. So uh, he decided there must be a better way and worked his way up the corporate ladder and skills needed to run a business in the right way. Wait, is there anything in Indiana other than corn? There's Welcome not. to the show, Ken. How are you? <laughs> Doing well, Chris. Thanks so much. And by the way, there's not. I, I work in the corn fields. Yeah, it's yeah. Good. I mean, and, and no slight to the cornfields because I love corn. I love my favorite corn is uh, being made is Mexican uh, lote. I don't know. Lote? I don't oh, dude, that. you got to have a lote. Oh, <laughs> boy, that's good. They basically take a ear of corn, they cook it, they butter it, and they smear it with mayonnaise and Parmesan. And then they sprinkle, you know, some hot, uh, hot Mexican stuff. I might have to break for a meal. So, can you give us your. Is. Actually, now I just didn't know the yeah. name. So, <laughs> yeah, anything you smear with mayonnaise and Parmesan, 
probably yeah. is going to be a good thing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so there you go. Uh, so Ken, give us your dot com so people can find you on the words. Yeah, the shift dot com, and you can c- come check me out at the shift dot com forward slash Ken as well. There you go. So uh, give us a little bit of an overview, a thirty thousand foot view on what you do and how you do it. Yeah. So, I mean, it really started, uh, go back to my childhood a little bit is what really kind of started my career trajectory and why I do what I do today. So mm-hmm. and that's usually where I mean, everything starts too. Yeah, it does. Fortunately or unfortunately. Right. So, <laughs> um, you know, literally Chris, I mean, you talk about the cornfields. I started working in the darn cornfields in Indiana when I was eight years old and wow. I know that, that breaks every labor law, but there is, <laughs> but when you're bored, and you want money, and your dad knows a bunch of farmers, you work in the cornfields, right? There you go. So I, I I grew up, you know, with a strong work ethic, and I grew up, you know, with my parents putting all their money on either Red 32 and saw a lot of boom and bust and saw them make some big mistakes. And, you know, I remember as a kid going to bail and, you know, wear my little clip-on tie and everything and eating lobster and life was great. And then literally, Chris, you look roughly my age. I'm not going to say that's good or bad. but 36? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Do you remember <laughs> a restaurant by the name of Chi Chi's by chance? I think I do, yeah, yeah. 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 My dad owned a Mexican restaurant called Pancho Villa. Do you have a lote there? Yeah, Chi Chi's moves in, puts my dad out of business. Oh, wow. Right? So I, I remember my mom coming and borrowing some money from me, and I remember. Your mom, going, wait, your mom borrowed money from you? She, uh, uh, she came and took me to the bank. I had to withdraw some money. Wow! So we could go pay the phone bill, right? Wow! So I saw a lot of ups and downs, and previous three generations were entrepreneurs, and I, I decided I wanted to do something different. So mm-hmm. I, I went to corporate America to start, and there you go. Kind of, kind of learned there. And, and now you're an entrepreneur. <laughs> yes, that's correct. Yeah, yeah, that's correct. Yeah. See so, yeah, that where you came full circle. Well, yeah. it sounds like your uh, your your father and your grandfather, according to your bio, try to make a business work, and it just wasn't working for him. Did you kind of learn from maybe some of the snake mistakes well, or things they were doing? I, I I did. My my father, he was one of those individuals that first of all overly trusted everyone. And oh, that's made, not going to work. Yeah. And he made a lot of, now, fortunately he's turned out and he's, I finally raised him right. He's grown up and, and everything now. And, uh, but does he, does he pay you for consulting? <laughs> no, he's, he's done very well. I mean, okay. fortunately more of those bets have paid off than failure. Right. But, um, you know, he, he's, uh, he, he made a lot of mistakes, right? Yeah. And, and it, you may or may not know it, but 50% of CEOs and business owners actually learn in their company teaching themselves, right? Mm-hmm. And my dad was one of those. So he taught mm-hmm. himself everything about leadership, everything about finance, everything about operations. And, and you think about it. I mean, that, that's one of the reasons why 50% of businesses fail after five years is a lot of people actually teach themselves. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 uh, I, I, I tried teaching myself through second grade and failed yeah. second grade. That's <laughs> a can. great callback joke. I love it. <laughs> um, there's somebody I'm su- I'm sure in the audience going, he failed second grade. Um, why are we listening to this idiot? <laughs> um, cause we have great guests on the show. who are really smart. See how that works. Yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, the, the other thing about entrepreneurs, and this is an important entrepreneur discussion is you fail a lot. Yeah. Like my first company was success by mistake. Yeah. Partially because I learned the work from my father, helping him in the summers in the stucco business for subcontracting. So that was that was a trade uh, that you know was hard to fail on. Yeah. But until winter came, and then I found yeah. out cement doesn't mix well in winter and stick to walls very well. Yeah. Um, By the way, it's my fiance's name. <laughs> oh, there you go. There you go. Uh, and uh, but. Uh, there was a series of you know uh, t- test runs that I did once I got the entrepreneur bug and yeah. and a lot of a lot of entrepreneurs go through that cycle of, yeah. of failing and learning and failing and then and then if you're lucky you know some one of these days that ball you keep swinging for the fences and that yeah. ball connects with the baseball bat and you hit a home run right right yeah and and and, and so you know a lot of entrepreneurs when they fail they they just need to keep swinging for the fence and. <laughs> Educate yourself and get better and stuff like that. Yeah. So it sounds like you went to the corporate side. Uh, yeah. You mentioned companies like Oracle. And, yeah. and what was your origin story, your journey through through that? Yeah, so great question. So my, my career actually started to take off, believe it or not, right at 9-11. 
Oh, really? Yeah. So um, the only trophy I've ever kept my entire life, and, and I have it here just to show you. So it's mm -hmm. a it's a giant bat. Mm -hmm. It says biggest deal ever, and it was closed uh, November two thousand one. Mm -hmm. And I was with a software company by the name of BEA Systems, and I closed a, a $40 million software deal with Quest Communications. Mm -hmm. I was young at that point. I was in my late 20s, and I was very cocky, as you can imagine. Wait, you're 36 now, you said? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Chris, maybe come on, said, don't call me out of my age. <laughs> maybe I said that. We, oh, yeah. we, we both yeah. screwed that yeah. up. But I wasn't humble, and it was a billion-dollar publicly traded software company, and I demanded that they put me in their executive track, and they did. And I was the only bag-carrying mm -hmm. sales guy in their executive track, and they invested in me. Wow. So I rose through the ranks there and then went over you know, and worked at some other big software companies, like you said, Oracle, and, and mm -hmm. I, I was groomed and uh, learned a lot of, you know, from, from some of the best out there. So they wouldn't go make the same mistakes that my father did. But that was my go. trajectory. There you go. Hey, and it's good to learn the business side of things. You know, yeah. you get that kind of MBA sort of experience or Correct, yeah. get it from college and stuff like that. And, you know, my, my father was, I, I, I often say about my father, and I love my father, and he, he did it the best he could. But uh, he was a very trusting man. But he also, uh, he, he kind of wanted, he had a get rich quick uh, schemes that he adopted er, very early on in the late seven sixties yeah. and, uh, silver and coins. And, you know, it, 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 I remember going through and, but he had a lot of great stuff in his library, but I had to manage it, but yeah. he, he would get involved with these MLMs and everything was about, you know, uh, in, in three months, Chris, I'll be able to retire. I'll have to right. wait again. I saw yeah. that too as a kid. That's tough. Did you? <laughs> yeah. Did you? Yeah. 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 And it, it was hard, uh, you know, yeah. it, at one point I said to him, you know, we were living in Utah at the time, uh, and I said to him, I says, you know, you've joined so many MLMs and cycled out of them that I think at this point, anytime someone start, has to start a new MLM, they have to appoint you, you know, some sort of honorary directorship yeah. because you've been in every one that's uh, known to man. Yeah. I think he rejoined Amway back and forth two or three times. And what it taught me by antithesis was do the work, man. Yeah. Do the hard work. Do the long haul. I don't agree. try and get rich quick. Yeah. And I still failed. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree. Yeah. I, I grew up in that similar environment. My oh. parents were always looking for that get rich quick and, mm. you know, put all the money on and take these big gambles. And like I said, I mean, fortunately, later on in life, I was scared to death they would have to come live with me and it paid off. But, um, you know, they, they made a lot of mistakes. So. Yeah. And, and, and I think learning the corporate road and the long ball, uh, is, is really important. I mean, it, it was, it was always, you know, I, I, every two weeks it was like, Hey, I just joined another MLM. I'm like, didn't you, you didn't get the last one distance. Uh, I'm telling you, know, you just, this one, it's going to work <laughs> with this one. You don't know, man, this one's the one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I get that when I live in Vegas with the gamblers, yeah. they're like, no, I have the right, this math thing's going to work. So I just need to loan me a grand and I'm, I'm going to make a million. You dollars. Like you said that last time. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, this, this importance of, of being an entrepreneur and seeing the long ball yeah. and just do the freaking work, uh, can make all the difference. So how did you cycle out of that and end up doing what you're doing now? Yeah. So right after corporate, I dropped out. I mean, literally I was traveling 150,000 miles a year, sat wow. down with my admin and she's like, Ken, you're busy because you have 52 pre-planned hours of meetings every single week. Okay. You know, without fires and other stuff. And I figured yeah. I did not want to do that anymore. So for <laughs> some time, I, I formed a, a consulting firm, which you mentioned earlier, but for some time, I, I was a fractional CEO, COO, and mm -hmm. a fixer, as people call mm -hmm. them. And business owners would hire me when they just, they, they were stuck. They didn't know what was, the, how to get to the next level. Hey, I'm at 10 million, can't break it. I'm at 20 million, can't break it. I, I continually turn over my staff and I can't figure it out. So they'd hire me to come in and fix those problems. And I did that for some time. Mm -hmm. And quite honestly, I wanted, I wanted to be able to impact more and help more mm -hmm. and thus form this community called the shift spot. So where, where business owners come together and a, coaching and peer advisory community to make radical shifts in their life and their business. 
There you go. So what is what is the key word there? The shift spot. Yeah. What does that mean, and what does it mean to you, and and why do you think that's uh, really important? To, yeah, like like to uh, yeah yeah. I'm I'm not a marketer, so my other business uh, GCE it stands for Gabrielle, Chloe, and Emma, my three daughters. But uh, and I formed that one and started that brilliant. So not a brilliant marketing mind at all. No, but, but it, it's an it, honor to your. Daughters. It's an honor to my daughters, yes. Yeah, and, they're going to sell it off anyway. Uh, you no, know, they want nothing money. to do with it, Chris. You yeah, know how they, kids are. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, the shift spot, you know, my partner came up with that name. And it was meant wow. to be for, hey, where do business owners go to make those shifts? Hey, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm stuck. Where do I make those changes? Ah, there you so go. That, that's, that's it. There you go. So how to shift your perception, how to shift your... Uh, your thinking, maybe your strategy for business? That is correct. So mm -hmm. so it, it, it's a community, right? And mm -hmm. we believe that community help, helps you navigate rapid change, build best practices, pursue results and transformation. And we work in all the basic business areas such as leadership and management, people issues or human capital, systems and process finance. And, you know, one of the things that we do that is very unique compared to anything else out there is we have this element of balance because we believe to be the best owner and CEO out there, you got to have balance. You got to have the right mind, the right body, the right soul and everything and, and be good with yourself to be able to really achieve your vision. Really? A good soul? <laughs> Maybe not a good soul all the time. But I yeah. sold mine a long time ago, man. That's how I... That's how I got all these companies. There you I go. Sold my soul, man. It's, uh, but no, it's good to have a soul because uh, yeah. if you're going to be a good leader, you got to have good morals and different things along those lines. So you built a community here. Uh, yeah. I noticed Explore membership is on the website. Become a member. Tell us about. Uh, there's one thing I want to touch on. Sure. You know, you you mentioned you save companies from uh, you know whatever they're stuck on. Yeah. Uh, one of the things I talked about this in my book is one of the things I did was I would go in and uh, we'd we'd offer loans to companies that were in trouble and needed and usually facing bankruptcy. Um, and then we go in and assess them and see if we could white knight them or fold them into what we had. And right. the one thing that was always interesting to me was I would meet with business owners and they were clearly, you know, heading right for bankruptcy and yeah. they, they couldn't really see it, but they could cause they were running out of funds. Right. Um, but I would just be able to look at them and go, you're six to nine months, three months away from yeah. hitting the wall Yeah. and you're burning fast. Right. And, uh, so, you know, usually the problem was, was the entrepreneur. Yeah, and it, so, it typically is, unfortunately. <laughs> right. I mean, it, it is. And when I've gotten engaged with, with businesses all the time, for, fortunately, the first step to working with us is you got to accept you have a problem. <laughs> and yeah. you, need to, you, want to, you want to make a change, right? Yeah. And, um, you know, and most of the times they will say, if I'm the problem, let me know, right? Yeah. But, but you're right, though, Chris. Yeah, they, that, that's what they also tell me, accepting I have a problem at the methadone clinic. Yeah. So there's yeah. a, don't take methadone yeah. or heroin people. Yeah. Um, but uh, no, and, and the funny thing was, is, is you talk to them and you go, hey, look, we, we can take over your company and we'll give yeah. you some walking money, but you're the problem. And then half your family is working here. <laughs> right, right. Uh, you know, I've seen that movie, but you got to go. Cause you're, you're, you just, you, you, you need to go to McDonald's or go someplace where, yeah. you know, someone can tell you what to do for a while. Cause you don't get it. And what was interesting to me is they always would have this model of their, whatever their business model was. And sometimes that model had worked. Sometimes it had worked for five years, three years, and then all of a sudden it stopped working because the yeah. market changes yeah. happen and then other times, you know, they just had plenty of money. So they were just burning through money until they right. leave. But trying to get them to shift as your company is called their thinking and that model was like pulling teeth. Yeah. And they would drive that mother into the ground and I would give them a uh, first right of refusal. Things yeah. If they wouldn't let us take them more. Cause sometimes the, the bad part was sometimes they get excited and be like, well, if this idiot sees something good, there must be something here. Yeah. Like, There's not. Cause the problem is you. Right. And I, I would tell that to people. I was really mean at getting across to him because I, I was trying to save him. So I'm exactly. Like, I'm going to yeah. save your marriage, your credit. I'm going to save all this shit for you. Right. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's painful. You got to give up on your dream, but you suck at this dream. Yep. And, uh, and so they would, and I'd be like, don't call me a week before bankruptcy. 
Don't do it. <laughs> you need to do it now. Don't call me a week before bankruptcy. You know when they always called? Yeah, yeah right about to file bankruptcy. bankruptcy. Yeah, Chris, you got any money? <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, let me guess. You kept running that same model. So I like the term of your company shift because yeah. you really have to shift your mindset. You so let's, let's get into the membership portion. How does that work at your guys' thing? What's the membership like there in this peer advisory community? Yeah. So, I mean, the, the onboarding process, uh, we'll call it, is first of all, you do a thing that we call a gap analysis, right? And, mm -hmm. uh, and, and actually want to offer this up to your, to your listeners as well uh, as mm -hmm. a free thing that is, okay. honestly, we get, it's a $5,000 value. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, it, it creates a lot of work on us, to be quite honest, but it'll give you a, a, a taste. And if they go to the, the shift spot forward slash gap and put in boss, you okay. can fill it out and okay. basically um you know it helps a, uh, they fill out this questionnaire and it goes for sales and it and marketing and operations and you know it, you know human capital systems and process all this stuff right and it's wonderful because it gives them insights into the areas that they're stuck in and the areas of opportunity to improve on right mm -hmm. so that they can start to focus on those things and scale their company so that that is a very first step in in the program then they're assigned an accountability coach right an oh. accountability coach works with them on a weekly basis right and then they just drop into the we have 144 events through the year mm -hmm. right uh, they drop in and some of those events are you know, an issues resolution event. And if you can kind of envision a bunch of CEOs sitting around and they they have an issue, right? A top issue like, hey, I've got to fire my CFO and I've never fired a critical person like that. We'll help mm -hmm. them come up with a solution that's professionally facilitated. Yeah. And then you can yeah. call me. I'll just show up with that baseball bat you got there. And, uh, I, I think passing second that, grade is a requirement though, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, okay. <laughs> Yeah, that. but but um, but and then every month we drop in an expert as well around human oh. capital, marketing, or finance. So our, our mm -hmm. goal is to surround them with peers and experts to help them get breakthrough, get past things, and get to the next level. Do most of the people join your community are they entrepreneurs or they work for big companies and stuff? This is purely for CEOs, business owners. Our mm -hmm. sweet spot is a hundred employees and below. Um, you know, and it's generally a CEO that has 10 years or less of experience, right? So mm -hmm. they, they've got a, a, a good model, but they know that something's missing and they don't know what it is and they need some help. Jeez, I wish I would have had you guys uh, 20 years ago, 30 years ago. <laughs> yeah. Seriously, though, I mean, like, you know, one of my problems back in the day with brick and mortar businesses. Yeah is you know about the only person you could go to for advice was attorneys yeah uh and they're expensive yeah i've yeah. seen that movie um and usually they're pretty smart but even then they usually weren't entrepreneurs and uh back in brick and mortar days i mean you know you, you went to see them ceo you're like hey can you help me they're like you know f off with that yeah. uh, i don't need any more competitors yeah and uh you know, pretty much my friends, we just surround ourselves with employees. And one of the things I talked about in my uh, book was about how I created the virtual board after, yeah. my, after my business partner left of uh, 22 years. Yep. And and uh, so this is kind of like a virtual board, as it were, where only you have smart people on it <laughs> instead of me. You know, it's, second it's, grade. it's it's a little similar, right? So yeah. I, I really, I looked at all the different ways out there that, that owners can get help. And one of those would be hiring a, an expensive fractional guy like I used to do, right? Mm -hmm. And to drop in. Another is a coach. Another, another is a board of advisors, right? Uh, you know, uh, there, there's all different ways, mm -hmm. right? But our idea was to basically surround them with the experts and meet them where they are, wherever in their journey, right? And allow them to access the information, jump in, get as deeply engaged as they want. So mm -hmm. Uh, I think it's definitely, you know, it's a, it's, it's much more than a, a board can offer be, because of, you know, how we surround them. It, yeah. Cool. Plus the board is going to outvote you and kick you out of this. There you go. There you so go. there's that. <laughs> no, they're just advisors and they don't have voting shares. So there you go. You don't want to give them. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's one of the reason I created the virtual board. Um, but yeah, I, and, and the biggest problem is, is having that mind meld, that mind. Yeah. 
uh, treasure resource, whatever you want to call it, yeah. uh, to be able to delve and be able to call on your problems. Like you say, Hey, right. how do I deal with this issue? Some, right. some things. And a lot of, you know, that's the, one of the challenges of, of building successful organizations, especially if they scale is you're going to have all sorts of different things. Like I remember the first time my vice president walked in my office said, uh, we got our first sexual harassment, uh, issue we got to deal with. And I'm like, I'm like, who is it? And he named two of our male employees. Yeah. And wow. I was like, I was like, wait, I was expecting this to be like a female yeah. male <laughs> thing, but we have one of our LGBT uh, Q employees, uh, and, and another gentleman was not getting along, uh, for reasons outside the business. But, uh, that was our first thing. And we, we yeah. were just like, how do I deal with how it? do we, how do we do with this? Like, yeah. I didn't see this yeah. one coming. I, I wouldn't talk this. <laughs> no, I, just, I, I know how to do the other thing, but yeah. uh, I did not. This was not in the movie, uh, you know, pick your movie. I think there was an old Michael Douglas movie back then about sexual harassment or something in the 90s. I know what you're talking about, and I can't place it. But yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, that's what I thought it would be. I'm like, yeah, it's going to be some guy who says some stupid shit to him. Yeah. And, uh, and, uh, but no, it was two guys. Been, there was lots of events through the thing. So being able to have access to this. Uh, the accountability guide is a big thing too. Yeah. Having people that you can help be accountable right. is really important. Yeah. And uh, I found out the hard way that just owing money to the mob is not a good accountability guide. Uh, yeah, mobsters aren't. Yeah. So don't do that, people. Um, I'm still trying to get my left leg to work right. Um, <laughs> where did that joke come from? I have no idea. I don't know. But <laughs> that's, that's the beauty of the show. We just make shit up as we go along. I mean. Yeah. I mean, I flunked third grade too, but don't tell anyone. Wow. Uh, yeah, it was a kindergarten as well, but yeah. uh, no one likes that joke. I don't know why. I think everyone's offended by the kindergarten. I like the kindergarten. I do too, yeah. but I got up. I'm scarred from kindergarten though, so don't ask Are me. You, why, but, I had a really nice kindergarten teacher. She was yeah. really, she was like a second mother. And, yeah. And uh, and then all the other ones hated me. Yeah, and, there you I, go. and I mean, seriously, seriously, I can't blame them. Have seen them, but accountability guides are really important. Uh, I use those to write my book, and uh, and that's how it got done. Actually, it was you know I I was competing with other people and having those other people that can kind of help you push you to your limits. They're like a yeah. coach. They're like a they're like that uh, military uh, sergeant, you know, who barks you every now and then, you know, right. and tells you to. You think about it, every pro out there, right? I mean, mm -hmm. look at Tom Brady. I don't care what you think about Tom Brady. I'm not a Tom sure. Brady fan. But he has the people surrounding him to make him better. That's right? true. I mean, there's not, a, there's not a seasoned professional out there, no matter what you do, that doesn't do that. Mm -hmm. so, so, yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, except for Giselle, I guess. No. <laughs> <There you go. laughs> There's a Tom Brady joke there. Yeah. Uh, welcome to the show, folks. Uh, the uh, that that turned out bad, but no, I mean, every every high performance coach needs somebody to uh, motivate them and keep them interested. I remember, I can't remember who the jazz coach was, but I was 12 years old and I delivered these these coupon papers. It was yeah. one of my first big jobs uh, other than mowing lawns. And I forget who it was of the Utah Jazz. I, I don't think it was Sloan, but uh, it was one of the Utah Jazz coaches. I think it was before that. Okay. And he came to us and he talked to us about being a coach. Yeah. And he says, you know, the funniest thing about a coach is these guys get paid millions and millions of dollars. Yeah. And you would think that that would just automatically motivate them. Right, they just yeah, be like, "Hey, yeah. I got, you know, I get fifty million dollars this year. I'm motivated." Yeah, He's yeah. Like, yeah. no. He goes, "No, you got to go out and you got to coach them and you got to consult with them and you got to motivate them, and and you got to help them be better players." You know? Yeah. I mean, can you imagine being the coach for Michael Jordan? No, I couldn't <laughs> imagine that one. Uh, I remember, great movie, by the way, if you haven't seen that. So I, I, I know there's a true story. I never saw the movie, but I know there's a true story where. I think it, it was the the famous Lakers coach was with him, and I believe he was with the Bulls, uh, or maybe it was the Bulls um, coach, and he's with him at the Olympics. And Michael Jordan goes out in like the first half and scores like a billion points, yeah, like some unreal number right. of points. And he's like, "What do you tell Michael Jordan to go next level for the next core, you know, half two billion points?" Yeah, and he's like, he went in and told Michael, he's like. You need to pass the ball more. Michael's like, yeah, whatever. Yeah. But, you know, you've, you've, you've got to have that. So that's really important to people. 
Um, and I guess, can they network inside of the uh, community and stuff? And yeah, absolutely. So it's, it's an online virtual community, right? Mm -hmm. Fill out their profile. Uh, they can connect with, if you're an attorney or a CPA or it doesn't matter, connect with folks that are, are in your industry as well and share best practices. So that's all there too. There you go. There you go. And you said that the link for the, the Voss stuff was on gap G A P. So uh, the shift spot forward slash gap, and then just use this, use the code Voss to get access to it. And oh, okay. they, they, they fill it out and then we'll give them in some input and Hey, here's some holes in your business, right? Yeah. You know, by the way, you have no financial controls, by the way, you're misclassifying all of your employees. You're going to get sued because you're in California. Mm -hmm. right? So we'll give them uh, some clarity, right. And help them mm -hmm. understand some of the areas of opportunity. There you go. I love that. Uh, a five thousand dollar value, folks. Free yeah. gap analysis. You yeah. can figure out where your uh, how to fix your business faster, scale with ease. You know, it it, it shows your blind spots in half the time. Uh, some yeah. people call those skatomas. Uh, the blind spots. That was the yeah. biggest challenge I had with my business. I'd be like, "Where are my blind spots?" And then like, "Uh, we're right behind you." Yeah, uh, <laughs> and it's easier for others to see it. You know that it is. Right? Yeah. So yeah. it's easy for all of us to point and go, did you see this? Uh, no, I didn't. Thanks. Right. Yeah. So. Because you're so immersed in it and yeah. you know, you're living it 24 seven. And then of course you're surrounded by fires and, yeah. and all the other, you know, uh, uh, things that you're going to have to deal with on a daily basis. My, my CEO used to be, was an incredible innovator and yeah. he had a very, he taught me a very uh, simple kind of mindset way of looking at things and thinking outside the box, which is a big deal for me. Yeah. And he, he would, uh, we would be working on something for like two or three weeks or sometimes months trying to figure out whatever project you want us to build and, and try and get it to work. Right. And we would just be like, just mucking through it and trying to, you know, just when we couldn't work, we were running experiments, of course, AB testing, ABC, D, yeah. G, F, G, all the way through yeah. Z, pretty much testing. Yeah. And he would walk into our damn office and I'd want to murder him, not for walking in the office for what he'd do next. Uh, but, uh, and he would, we, he'd be like, how's it going with the little project there? Eh? And we'd be like, yeah, we're just trying to resolve these. And here it's going. He's, uh, so let me see what you're doing. Uh, you doing this, you do that. He goes, uh, yeah, you need to do that right there and that'll fix it. And then it'll work. And then he'd just leave <laughs> smugly. <laughs> we'd just yeah. be like, damn you. We've been here for months and you just walk in and know what we're doing. Yeah, it's Resolve. a difference of working in the business versus on the business and uh, elevating yourself and seeing the force or the truth. There you go. So, work in the business or yeah. work on the business or yeah. do both, actually, probably. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, having that second uh, pair of eyes, you know, I, I used to walk around my employees and be like, you know, what am I missing? What are, what, what, how, what haven't I seen? You know, right. Uh, I learned, I learned very early on uh, <laughs> through a lot of money. Uh, that I am not the arbiter of every great idea and uh, business concept. Uh, in fact, I flunked second grade, so I'm not. Uh, I heard really, that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Where'd you hear that? Uh, anyway, I, I forget. <laughs> it's, probably the, it's probably somewhere. It's probably, yeah, it's somewhere on the probably internet. on Google. Yeah. In fact, that's the title of my next book. He <laughs> flunked second grade. That'd that be a great tell, book. Actually, that might. I yeah. might people be like, let's read what this idiot has to say. Yeah. It's kind of like 14 years of this show. Yeah. Um, so what have we talked about that you guys do over there at the shift spot? Uh, and what have we covered? Well, I mean, we've, we've covered a great deal. I mean, so it, uh, you know, the community, the experts are coaching, the accountability, the, the, the gap, you know, we, we could talk about some of the success stories if you want, but take any angle you want, Chris. I mean, sure. Let's let's touch on these events you guys do. Let's uh, fill that in a little bit. You, yeah, uh, it looks like you guys have some uh, upcoming events, and and they're targeted towards certain aspects of your business. Yeah, yeah, that's correct. So every month, uh, as I'd say, we've got a targeted area, and we'll work on it. So, for example, in May was marketing, right? And you know that marketing is really tough. As a matter of fact, it's a thing that. I think honestly, owners hate the most because it's so tough to put accountability on marketers sometimes, to be quite <laughs> honest. You know, it's like, what's my return? <laughs> you know, um, and, and but, anyways, we had this great uh, CMO come in who created the jingle 1877 Cash Now. Do you know that? The opera. Oh, yeah, yeah. 
So he was a marketing expert and walked you know, the community through, here's, here's all the ways to make investments, here's to get, how to get your return, here's actually how to change your brand, how to attract new employees and things of that nature. And then next month is gonna be human capital and every month there's just, there's a, a concentrated effort and focus on that. So you have the other events piled in to help you from an accountability perspective, solving your problems and your issues but every mo every month is focused on some of the core areas finance human capital sales marketing operations and systems to help basically just surround the owner and the ceo to help elevate them so that they can achieve their vision there you go there yeah. you go now one of the things you noted here is why do you believe people 50% of companies fail after year five. I'm really curious about that. Yeah, I mean, I have some thoughts. I, yeah, I, I mean, it's, it's honestly, you go back to my conversation with my father, right? Earlier, oh. right? Mm -hmm. uh, you look at 50% of all owners mm -hmm. actually learn on the job, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, I've got the stories I've, I've got, Chris, are amazing. So I, I spoke to this, uh, these two VAs recently, they're looking to join the community. And one started in sales and the other started as a virtual assistant and they've got a $2 million company and they're, but their hair is on fire. Right. And the things you hear is like, our, our people are a bunch of babies. Uh, we don't understand our finances. We don't understand how to automate things. We don't know how to <laughs> fix these things. And we're thinking of just quitting. Right. And wow. bagging it. Right. So, but, they're teaching themselves on the job like my dad did, right? So mm -hmm. they're teaching themselves all this stuff, which is complicated, right? And I'll be honest, I think that a lot of times that's why companies end up failing, right? Because mm -hmm. you're, you're learning. You, you don't, a lot of times they don't understand how to make those shifts or make those adjustments. So we believe that, you know, with a community like ours, that we can help you punch through that five-year plan. There you go. Uh, what are some of the same repetitive problems that you see most companies below 100 people have other yeah. than you getting to the five year mark and failing? Yeah. And I'm with sure, you. I'm sure with your experiences, they're the exact same thing, but honestly, mm -hmm. not knowing how to hire correctly, oh. bringing in the wrong talent, retaining yeah. people too long, yeah. um, throwing bodies at problems rather than systemizing and putting, you know, operations and systems in place. Um, I got in trouble just for throwing bodies on the there windows. You go. There you go. That goes back to the sexual harassment thing, right? But not I can't do that anymore. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But and and honestly, I mean, a lot of owners making decisions on emotions and gut versus facts and data. Ah, right. There you so go. That, that's that's a big thing. But they're they're just they're, they're I don't I mean look I've worked while I've been in, in a fractural role, HVAC mechanical. Uh, CPAs, law firms, SaaS business, online, you name it. And it doesn't matter what industry it is. They're all the same movies that play over and over again. And painfully, if we put ourselves around the right people and get the right help, we can avoid some of those nightmares. There you go. Yeah, yeah that was our thing in business. Our, our business contract started from one sheet to being like these, these manuals that were like yeah. Yeah. started to get corporate level. Yeah. And uh, hiring was yeah. was a big thing that we were making mistakes on. You cited, you know, holding on to people too long. Yeah. That was another big thing that we were bad at. You know, we're like, well, we don't want to fire him because yeah. that's mean. And then yeah. I just learned to enjoy firing people that yeah. were, were bad people, their jobs. And I don't like firing people that, they, you know, they haven't, they've done their job and maybe f economies, whatever, but okay, uh, to somebody too long, you're hurting your other employees. That's what exactly. Yeah. Right. Especially but, if they're I mean, toxic. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you got to focus on the greater good. And if you're keeping an employee that brings down the rest of the staff, are you really serving your clients or your company and your, your employees? You're probably yeah. not. Plus it's fun to fire toxic people too, as well. <laughs> <laughs> so Lots of people deserve it. <laughs> they, they do. They do. I mean, usually they're usually they're bringing everybody down. They're what we used to call in the day tubing everybody. They're bringing them down, depressing everybody, yeah. spreading a lot of rumor and innuendo. They just yeah. they just ruin everybody's dream. But yeah. hiring well is God one of the most important things I ever found. Uh, yeah. We went to three and four interviews and different people interviewing and, and teaching my people to shut up and not sell the job and yeah. just listen to what Amen. the person does. Don't sell the job. Amen. Yeah, don't sell the job. Yeah. So job sells itself. Um, but shutting up and listening to people, 
I mean, we would have people by the third interview, they would show up in their pajamas and flip flops and have their feet up on the thing. They'd be telling us about their prison stories and shit. And we're just like, wow, you've gotten really comfortable thinking you have this job at the third or fourth thing. And you just told us everything that uh, we missed. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah. So hiring well. I mean, that just, we had, we, we would have so many problems with toxic employees. And then once we started, you know, just putting in the work up front, just saved us such a nightmare on the back. Right. But, uh, you know, it's one of those things that you just, you learn the hard way, sadly. Yeah. And so by having stuff like with what you're doing with your community and stuff makes a difference. Uh, yeah. Let's get a plug in here. You got a free ebook as well. People like free stuff. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Gonna... Go check, check out the shiftspot.com and we've got an ebook on there uh, how to scale with ease. And it gets a lot of tips and tricks and things that I've picked up over the, uh, the decades and things that we talk about within the community as well. But download that as well. And obviously, download and check out the gap to get some advice. So, and that gap is something that I use for extensive engagements when I was a you know fractional CEO, COO, when I would start out there. So we'll offer that up to your, your listeners. Yeah, check that out, guys. Uh, you know, any more advice, any, any advice you can get for yourself to go to the next level and, uh, you know, avoid the pitfalls. I yeah, mean, yeah. That's yeah. one of the reasons you hire a coach, too, is, you know, he's like, hey, you know, you're going to fall in that pit if you... Uh, do what you're doing or you keep doing what you're doing and, and it's, it's going to be bad. It's going to hurt. And you're like, Hey, uh, that's a good idea. We should uh, avoid that. Yeah. You know, hiring people that have more experience and, and can see things before you can make all the difference. Anything more, Ken more that we uh, can touch on or tease out that you want to do? Well, you know, one thing, I mean, you just hit something right there, actually. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of times, Look, I don't know if a lot of CEOs and owners know that their staff tells them what they want to hear, mm. not what they need to hear mm. as well. So joining with something like us and hearing that transparency and getting that direct feedback is of extreme value, right, to course correct. Mm-hmm. Right, And, I, and I, I don't think a lot of us surround ourselves and take advantage of those sort of things. <laughs> man. But, but you got to. You got to have somebody that's going to call you out. So, yeah. You know, and that's that's the nice thing. I mean, the people in your community don't have to kiss kiss the you know, the person's butt. You can be straight with them, be honest with them, you know, give them the hard truth. I, I learned that with my uh, last CEO that I had worked with before I, I really started hitting home runs for companies. Yeah, and I, I said to him, I said, you know that the, the one guy on the board, we'll just call him Bob because yeah. that's, that's the callback we always use. Uh, I'm like, Bob is always like negative. He's a negative Nancy. He's always yeah. like, you know, whatever the, whatever the idea is, Bob is like really, you know, he's really, he's really just ruined everyone's vibe. And he's always like, you know, whatever you can guarantee whatever would work or you're like, well, we're going to go to right. You know, Bob's going to choose left. Right. Right. And I said, the, I said that with my CEO friend and I said, uh, I said, what's with Bob, man? Can we just get rid of Bob? And he goes, Chris, you got to have somebody on your yeah, you got to have you got to have somebody on your board that doesn't kiss your ass, that isn't a yes man. Don't surround yeah. yourself with yes men yeah. because that when Bob's Bob's wrong a lot of times cuz he's just a negative Nancy, but yeah. when Bob's on and he's right, you're going to save millions of dollars. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but look, it, it can look, you know this, it can be lonely at the top, man, yeah. and you need you need friends at the top to to help you persevere and get to where you need to go. So yeah. Yeah. Well, that's probably my problem. No one likes me, so <laughs> I don't have any friends. <laughs> so there you go. Even yeah. my dogs are like, seriously, yeah. we're over you, man. Uh, well, this has been a great, fun conversation, Ken. Uh, give us your .com so we can find you on the interweb, just please. Yeah, the, the shiftspot.com, really simple, and you can find all of our handles and everything right there. And like I said, the shiftspot.com forward slash gap to, for your listeners and use the, co- the uh, code at Voss and fill mm-hmm. that out, and we'll give you some insights so you can get crystal clarity in some of the areas of opportunity to improve on. So There you go. Mm-hmm. And there'll be yeah. a link for that on the Chris Voss Show some advisory so if you lose track of that folks go look it up well thank you very much ken for coming on the show we really appreciate it likewise appreciate it all right there you go thank you all right sounds good and uh to my audience uh thanks for tuning in go to goodreads.com for chess chris foss youtube.com for chess chris foss linkedin.com for chess chris foss all those great places on the internet thanks for tuning in be good to each other stay safe and we'll see you guys next time and that's it